Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Nolan or the Optimistic Gamer here and welcome back to Crafted Chaos. We have a very exciting episode in store today because for the first time in the series, we will be working with the Create Mod. One of our, as I mentioned in the previous episode, our headlining mods in this pack. The Create Mod will keep us busy for a lot of time to come, but we are only going to spend a couple episodes on it for now. Today we are going to dive in to the basics and hopefully by the next episode we will have some actual engines that we can use to power everything. I'm first going to start by moving our crafting grid and our inventory storage into the warehouse and then we will go from there. And speaking of, our storage disk is starting to fill up, so we will probably want to make a second one today as well. There we go, we are all situated with that, and now we can get started with the Create Mod. Now, I have used this mod in the past, but I am by no means an expert, so it will be an adventure for us. The basics I have a pretty good grasp on, but we also have some guides that will help us out as we go along. Now one of the things we are going to need a lot of for this is andesite, and I don't know that we have any andesite, I think we wanted to build with it for our floor or something like that and we were unable to so we need all of these andesite alloys we have plenty of iron but we have no andesite luckily for us look at this we can create it with our nether quartz essence and stone essence so that is very convenient for us let's see how much we can make before we run out of stone essence it looks like we got maybe 10 stacks and a half for that 672 that should hopefully be enough to get us started and then we need a bunch of iron nuggets as well i'm just going to make a handful here and we can make our andesite alloys from that again we are going to need a lot of these today and we got a sturdier rocks advancement so I think we will go with four stacks of those just to get us started. We can always come back and make more. So we need to make the essentials first. What we need right now are the engineer's goggles. We need a gold sheet for this. We do have a hammer, but it is not showing because, well, maybe we don't have a hammer. I thought we did. Ah, I used it up on our iron sheets. So let me make a hammer real quick and that is done with a couple of iron ingots. We will put that in there and we can make a gold sheet. This is not working for some reason and I don't know why, is it shaped crafting? Huh, let me try a crafting table. Well, it doesn't seem to like that either, so my guess is it has to be a create hammer or energized power, huh. Well, we have the Ad Astra hammer. Let's try making a diamond hammer in here. And there's no option to cycle, but that looks a little bit better than the Ad Astra one. There we go. And we will just make a handful of those gold sheets. Perfect. And we now have gold plate and a good tool advancement as well. So let's make our goggles. These will help us see what we normally cannot see, and we will put those on. We do lose our netherite helmet protection, but that's okay. I don't think we are really going to leave the factory. I'll close up shop though. We don't need any stray mobs wandering in. So we have that, and we also need to make the wrench right here, also requiring gold sheets and a cogwheel. Now I believe we get an advancement for this, we need a handful of shafts, I'll make 64 of those, and we will make 64 cogwheels. I guess we don't get an advancement for that, that's okay. And we will make our wrench. There we go, we do get an advancement for that. Equip engineer's goggles and a wrench. So we are good to go, we now have the basics. We need some large cogwheels though, so let's go ahead and make those as well. We can make them with small cogwheels, or we can just make another stack of shafts, and we will make our la large cogwheels from that. And then we will also need some shafts by themselves, so we will make a stack of those. And then we need a source of energy. Now we can do water wheels for this, 
we could do generators, there are a handful of things, but the most basic is the water wheel. So we are going to make a large water wheel, which is made with a small water wheel, and that will allow us to generate some power. So we need a source of flowing water that we can attach this to, and then we can attach our shafts and spin it. And I think the easiest way to do this is just build a small tube here in the middle that we can have some water run through and then we can attach our water wheel to this. I just want to make sure we don't have water going all over the place. So we will dig a small hole right here. The water will flow into that. If I'm not mistaken, we will break that block just in case we don't want to destroy all of our torches. Oh, this is interesting. One of our note blocks seems to be playing now in the background or not note, blo note blocks, our jukebox discs, but I did not start it and I don't know where it is coming from. It's definitely in game though, because every time I pause, the music stops and it seems to be coming from right around here because as I get closer, it gets louder. What if we go outside? Huh, this is very weird. I cannot figure it out. So I guess we are just going to have some music playing in the background. It's kind of nice though. Okay, so we need a water bucket. I think that we can just put water essence with a normal bucket. I hope that would be very convenient. Let's make a bucket real quick. Oh, we can't. Okay, maybe eight. Huh. Let me look up if we can craft a water bucket. Okay, for essence. I figured there was some kind of recipe for it. And we will place that right there. That will flow down. Okay, I think we are good to put that block back. And now we can place down our water wheel. So I think if I remove this block right here, I hope we don't flood everything. And it looks like we are okay, perfect. So let's extend this out a little bit. And I think if we put our water wheel right there, there we go. We now have harnessed hydraulics. That is fantastic. So we can remove these blocks right here. We don't technically need them. We will just have a floating water wheel. We will get that taken care of in the future. But for now, we have something spinning and that will turn our shafts, which we can then use two power machines. Now we can change the gear ratios of this, which is great. So if we place a large gear right there or cog wheel and then put a small one adjacent in the corner like that, there we go, shifting gears. And then we can do this once again. We can place a large gear, have another small gear. Oh, we can't put it there because we have a cog wheel up there. There we go. And then another large, maybe I could go in this direction instead. That will give us a little bit more space to work with. So we will do a small and then another large and then another small and another large. There we go. Now we are getting all kinds of speed. And there we go. I think that is our fastest speed. We might be able to go one more though. Let's check. So large and small yes there we go i think that is 256 i will have to make a speedometer and we will be able to measure that but that is how we are able to turn this slow turning water wheel into something that can power some of our more demanding machines i could probably make this a little bit more compact though so i will do that real quick and there we go by using these half shaft cog wheels i was able to really condense that and now we have a much more compact still very large but much more compact set of gears so that will be helpful for us now we can start to take a look at some of the other machines and things that we can create no pun intended for our progression in this mod now, one of the great things about this mod is the ability to automate a lot of different things, and we can do that using conveyor belts and all of these different shafts and things like that, item hoppers, all sorts of different 
things that are super super useful to us of course the trains is the big part of this mod which we will have one running into here but that is a ways down the road we are nowhere near having the resources to be able to afford that but what I would like to make today to help us in the next episode is automating things such as the iron sheets and the gold sheets. There's also different alloys that we can make that we can all automate using different blocks. So one of the things that we want to make is the mechanical press and that is right here. So if we take a look at this, we just need to make an andesite casing. To make these, we want a deployer and to make the deployer we also need an andesite casing so we are going to have to do this the manual way but that's okay so we take some wood right here we will use the acacia wood that we have and we will take some of our andesite alloys which we still have a fair amount left again these are super easy to make so we can do this the manual way which is i think just called manual application where we right click Oh wait, I have the, I think we have to strip the wood actually. So let's take the X and we can strip that down. And now we right click and there we go. The andesite age that will give us our andesite casing, which we can then collect maybe with the wrench. That's a lot easier. I just shift right click and then it goes straight into our inventory. So now with these andesite casings, we can create some of our first machines. So again, the mechanical press, we will want that. We will also want a deployer, which is right here. For this, we need a brass hand. We need to make some brass sheets for that, which we need to make brass ingots. We can almost afford, we need some zinc. I don't think we have any zinc though. I will have to make some zinc essence here in the future. But we can also make this with mixing while well, we still need zinc. I might have to go find some real quick. Of course, we do have our very reliable digital miner. So I will just put that right here and get some conduits running into it. And we can just search for zinc. And there we go. 2,300. Not bad. So we don't need all that many, but we will just take what we can get. We will throw this into our smelting factory right here and pretty much instantly get all of that zinc. So now we should be able to create the brass ingots that we need. This will give us four of them. We might as well just craft a handful. We are going to need it for other things as well. And we need some brass sheets. We can do this with our hammer or we can set up our mechanical press, which is what we will do instead. And then we also need this electron tube, which is made with polished rose quartz, which is either sandpaper in the deployer or normal rose quartz through an enrichment chamber. That looks a little bit easier. Plus we have a lot of quartz, a lot of redstone and the ultimate enriching factory. So we will get plenty of rose quartz here in the matter of seconds and we can make that electron tube and pink diamonds there we go we will throw those in there and make our electron tube we will probably need a few more of these so i will just make a handful and now all that's left is our brass hand so again we need these brass sheets we've already made our mechanical press so we can bring this over to our gearbox right here. And when we place this down, uh oh, overstressed. That's okay, there is a easy fix for this. We are just going to remove some of these gears. And now I think if we place that down, there we go, we are good. I think we can put any block underneath here and put our brass ingots. We will just place these right under here. And there we go, bonk. Our mechanical press will do its job. We need four of these in total. There are other methods that we will work towards in this episode to make that process a little bit easier using conveyor belts and funnels, all the things that I mentioned before. But with these brass sheets, we can make our brass hand and we can make the deployer. The deployer we can also place right next to it. Well, no, we can't because stress overload. This is why I want to get a much more powerful generator such as the 
steam engine that will be a lot stronger. Oh, okay, that's why it found so much zinc, because it wasn't just mining for zinc, it was also mining for prosperity shards, so we will stop that, I think we have plenty of zinc now. So on top of the press and the deployer, we also want the mixer, which is right here. We need to make a whisk for this, which we can afford already. And there we go. Now this is not spun with the shafts, it is instead spun with the cogwheels, but it is horizontal. In fact, if we place this down, say just right here, we will see there is a horizontal cogwheel right there. Oh my, that is very loud. I would be careful around those cogs, my invisible trader friend. Let's see what you have though. Magic sapling, well we were just talking about how about that? That is what we want. Hang on. Hang on. This is a good deal right there. So let's grab some of these emeralds and let's go find that wandering trader. Wither skeleton skulls? Can we get three of them? We can. How many can we buy? Well, I want one of these saplings and we are just going to buy him out of those skulls. We got five of them. That's okay. That is five more than I thought that we would be able to buy and I'm gonna buy a few of those magic saplings as well. We might already have magic trees, but we have a lot of emeralds. I think we have essence. If we don't, that's not an issue, but that will be great for us nonetheless. Anyway, as I was saying, with this, we have to turn these cog wheels so that they are horizontal. The easiest way to do that is, well, we will have to move our press, but we will place a cog wheel next to that one that will put these cogs on a horizontal plane, and then we can just extend these up. I'm just using the normal cog wheels for now. Let's see, well, I guess I could place one there. And there we go, it is once again overloaded. But if we remove this, that should spin up the mixer. So we also want a basin underneath the mixer that will allow us to mix items inside. That is five andesite alloys, and we can come over here and place that underneath the mixer head. So now when we place items into here, the mixer head will lower, spin the items together, and we will get different types of mixtures. Another thing we are gonna want to have is the crushing wheel. For this though, we have to make a mechanical crafter, and this is the big thing that we are going to work on today, because this will allow us to make some of the more complex machines that we will want to have. So if we cycle through here, I don't know what all requires the mechanical crafter versus just a crafting table, but essentially it is a large crafting table. I think they go up to five by five for recipes or maybe seven by seven. But if we go back to the crushing wheel, we will see that there are all of these spaces right here. It takes up more space than a normal three by three crafting grid allows. So we want a mechanical crafter that will allow us to craft all of these items together. We need 21 of these. We need seven of each of these items so we need seven brass casing now we can use this with the manual item application using our brass or we can use the deployer which i think we will opt for just so that we can see how it works so i'm gonna disconnect these cogs right here for now just so that we can save some of this energy for the deployer and we will place that down right here we will see if we can rotate that there we go and now one more time uh oh i can never figure this out there we go all right so our deployer is now in place and to create the crafter right here or the brass casing we will put the stripped logs onto or any log i think onto no it's stripped okay we will put that onto the depot, which we also need to make, and that is made with some andesite casing. I wonder if there is a way to strip logs in our inventory. Well, we can use a saw, which actually, let's have a look at that. The mechanical saw, we can afford that right now. I guess we already have andesite casing, so it doesn't really matter. I think, what were we trying to make? The depot. There we go. 
So we now have a mechanical saw. We don't need it right now, but we have it just in case. I'm going to move this up one more block. There we go. And then we can put our depot right there. Or did I mess this up? I think I messed this up actually. I think it was fine how it was before. Well, let's just give it a shot. So we will put our brass. Well, seeing how I need all of these stripped logs anyway. So I think we move this. If we place that here, can we put our logs? Well, is that doing anything? I can't tell. It is. It is just doing it very slowly. And we're almost done. Is this going to strip our log or turn it into planks? We will find out. Or is it just not going to do anything to our logs? So I think we need a little bit more speed on this. Luckily, what we can do is run a shaft going through the deployer and have a saw on this side. Now, that's a little bit better, but it still isn't doing anything. Do we have to place them vertically? Huh, that's interesting, but it does chop down all of the logs. I'm glad it didn't get rid of our floor though. I'll have to look more into this. In fact, if we just go into our menu and hold W while looking at it, we can be able to see what we want. Okay, so do we just throw our item on it? Okay, that's what we do. Whoa, that was weird. All right, so let's try this again. We have our saw upside down now and we cannot throw items into it. I'm not surprised by that at all. I think what we need to do is just rotate this so it is facing up. There we go, and it is still spinning. And now if we throw our logs, there we go. Uh-oh, that's not what we want. That is a hollow log, but that's kind of cool actually. We will find a use for this. For now though, I'm just gonna do this the old fashioned way. Okay, so if we place our logs right down there, and if we add our brass ingots, I don't think that's reaching. Okay, yeah. So it does need to, we can either raise the depot up one or lower the deployer. I think it's a little easier to just raise the depot. There we go. And now it is waiting for these logs to be added. And there we go. We are now applying all of that brass to the stripped logs and it's actually doing it pretty quickly. Again though, we are still working towards a way to fully automate this so that it will continuously run anytime we add materials. So we will wait for this to finish up. It has about eight more left and then we will work on making our crafter. And I made some of those extra electron tubes so we should have plenty of resources. It's always the crafting table that I am running out of though. So I'm gonna make a stack of those that we can keep in there. So we have three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. That should be enough. We really only need the 21 slots. Yes, 21 slots, but we can go up to five by five. These are also spun similar to the mixer with the cogs themselves. So these shafts will do us no good. And I think we will put this over here on this side just to give us a little bit more space. So we will build these in a five by five pattern and we will see that we have black sort of arrows. Some of them are arrows, some of them are just lines. These are what, these are where the items will flow essentially. So we want these all to flow to one central block. So all of these arrows up here, and we want to make sure that everything feeds in to a block working towards this. Similar to a chain of hoppers, we want all the hoppers to feed in to the next. So I will just have all of those facing down and then they will go across in that direction. I hope we can get enough energy to spin this up. If we can't, it's not a big deal, but it would be nice if we could. So let's place a bunch of these cog wheels going in this direction. We will have a few going over here. And there we go. We got the desperate measures. Drastically slow down a mechanical crafter to procrastinate on proper infrastructure. And it's a hidden advancement. That's actually pretty funny. But yes, this will definitely aid us 
quite a bit. So we want a bunch of andesite alloys, which we are all out of now, so let me make a few more. And we will want some kind of plank and some kind of stone. So we will just take normal stone and four oak planks. There we go. I guess we weren't out of andesite alloys. I just didn't see those there, but this uses a lot of them anyway. So now we can place in all of the materials we need to make the crusher. It'll be four planks, one stone, and then andesite alloys going all the way around the edge, just like this. Now, because this is on the slowest mode, it will probably take a very long time. I think we also need a depot. Uh oh. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. Well, I think we will also need a depot right here for the items to land on. So let's go ahead and grab the one that we have over here. And I think we place this down either right here. Oops, right there. That doesn't seem to be doing it. So we will place it down in the floor right here. And are the items moving? Still no. Looks like all of the arrows are in line though. Let me try a hopper. We will see if this does the trick. Still nothing. How about a chest? And nothing. So I think what we may have to do... Well first, let's make sure that we have enough speed on this thing because maybe that is our issue. Well it doesn't say anything about the speed, but let's have a closer look at this. So setting up mechanical crafters, an array of mechanical crafters... Oh. An array of mechanical crafters can be used to automate any crafting recipe. Using a wrench, the crafters' paths can be arranged, which we've already done. We have all of them arranged as they need. For valid setups, all paths have to converge into one exit at any side. And then the outputs placed in the inventory, so the deployer requires rotational force. We have that. Right click the front to insert items. Once every slot contains an item, the process will begin. So it's making me wonder if we need to just get rid of those corners that we have. I don't know what is going on with the world right now. But I think what we will try is placing a crafter right here, changing the output. Dang it, I did it again. Changing the output so it goes that way. And then they did have the depot right there in that example. It might just be our very slow speed, but it could also be the fact that these corners, well, I don't know. I don't think that would be it. Let's try this one more time with the current configuration. And if this doesn't work, then we will mess around with the different speeds. And it doesn't look like it is doing anything. So I think we need to just change the speed right here which is not an issue at all. So we will move these cogs right here and we will change some of these gear ratios. So a large cog and then a small cog wheel, another large and another small. And then, and then let's see if that is enough. Oops. So now if we go around the front, Oh, overstressed. Okay, so we need to disconnect something over here. We will just rotate that shaft, but that still isn't enough energy. Let's maybe try one less cog right here and see if that does it. Okay, we're spinning. Is it crafting? It is not. So it makes me think that maybe we do have to get rid of these corners right there, and then we will place our depot over here on the side. We will put that there. We will have that arrow going into it and then these will go up. These will go over. That to the side, that will go to the side, off to the side. And now we should be good. I don't see any flaws in any of the arrows anywhere. They all point to this row which points to that depot. And we have as much rotational speed as we could get. Although I think I do know of one other method that we could try to get a little bit more speed. But let me just try this first and we will see if this resolves our issue. And nothing. How about if we put 
cobblestone in here instead. Is that what the issue is? No. Okay, well that makes me feel a little bit better knowing that. Yes, it is any type of stone. I saw stone cycle through there in 21 of the mechanical crafters, which we have. So I think we just need a little bit more rotational speed on this. For that, we are going to try this adjustable chain gear shift, which is made with an encased chain drive and an electron tube. So we will make two of these. There we go. And then our electron tubes. Did I run out? I think I did. So we will just make a couple more of those. And now we can place those with our encased chain drives. What these will do is change our gear ratios for us automatically. So I think if we place that there and that there, right now nothing is happening. But if we take a lever and place that on this one and power it, there we go. Now it is spinning up. Our items still aren't crafting. I swear, if this is what the problem was. Okay, overstressed. See, it is this. This is what is causing all of our problems. I wonder if we could get a second water wheel in here. Wait, wait, I think we're crafting. Oh, no, okay. Oh, hang on. Where did the stone go? Because before, I don't think it was connected, and I can't tell if it's... It does not look like it is moving. I think... Oh, wait. Yes, it is. All right. How about that? So we are now making our crusher. I guess this is enough speed. We don't really need that second water wheel, but hey, it's nice to have it, I guess. So very slowly, but very surely, we are getting our first set of our crushing wheels. We will get two of these from all of this. It is very satisfying to watch everything come together the way it does, and we will just wait for this to arrive at the depot. And there they are. There's one. I guess we just take it from there. I guess it didn't want to go to the depot. But we now have our two crushing wheels, which we will be able to use to crush things down. So I think what I will do is kind of clean everything up. We will get a more permanent setup for all of the machines that we have made. I'll go over that and then I think we will call it there for today's episode. All right, I have moved everything over. I figured since we are not going to have our train for a while, we can utilize this space in the factory for our create creations. So we have four water wheels on the outside, one right back here to power our crafter. One behind this one to power this mess right here. And then we have a couple right out here for these crushers, which I am now realizing are going in the wrong direction. There is an easy fix for this. We will just take our gearbox right here. And I think if we place that like this and then put that one right there, there we go. Except we are grinding backwards now. So I'm going to move these gearboxes to that side and then we should be good. And this should hopefully take care of that issue. There we go. Now we are grinding in the right direction. So that is the grinder, the or the crusher, I should say. The we have our press over here, the deployer, the mixer and the saw right here, which I don't think we want to stand on. Yep, definitely not. We don't want to stand on that. I know for a fact we don't want to fall into that. That could potentially be lethal damage with how our armor is set up right now. And the crafter right over here will just do its thing. We will go ahead and change the direction of all of these, though. There we go. So that will export all the way to out here. And that is our create factory as it is right now. Of course, in the next episode, I really want to get a steam engine going. If we fully optimize that, we will be able to power all of this stuff 
very, very easily. So that is our goal for the next episode. I know we said that we would get around to the mechanical belts today, but we didn't. We will save that for next episode as well. In the meantime, I am going to continue stocking up on all of the resources that we will need to put ourselves, set us up for success in that next episode. But for now, if you enjoyed today's episode, definitely hit that thumbs up button. And I'm not sure how it's possible that we can wear our jetpack at the same time as our chest plate. I think I need to re-log. Our jetpack seems to have disappeared from our body. Unless it is right here. How about that? Isn't that convenient? So that means then that we can... I guess that's just a special thing here. We can wear our chest plate. Can we wear the goggles? Oh, that's nice. Ooh, that is really nice. And we look very goofy for sure. Almost alien-like. But that that is good to know. But again, that is where we are leaving it for today. If you enjoyed the first look at our Create Mod Adventures definitely hit that thumbs up button and make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on daily content as soon as I publish it. Check the description for some more important information, links, how to contact me, all of that good stuff. And with all of that being said, comment, like, subscribe, remember to stay optimistic, and I will see all of you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Bye!